Business to Business. Welcome, everybody. With joy, we breach the haves of suffering that denies us creativity and literature. Joy is art, is an ethics of resistance. From A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Welcome to Pollinating Purpose, a caring approach to business. I am your host and collector of fun rocks and good times, Miriam Waligi. I am also the social enterprise program manager and coach at Pillar Nonprofit Network. Pollinating Purpose is a show about supporting organizations who seek to create social impact through their work. Whether not profit, for profit, or grassroots organizations, you'll learn key considerations to starting and growing your own social purpose business in a long term and sustainable way. Today, I am absolutely peached to be welcoming my dear friend and pal, Darielle, to today's episode. As a quick disclaimer, please note that the information shared in this episode is for educational purposes only and should not be considered legal advice in any way. Darielle Teitelbaum is a corporate lawyer based in Toronto and the founder of All Legal, a unique law firm that focuses on working with athletes, artists, wellness professionals, and entrepreneurs. Darielle's goal is to provide more accessible legal protection for all Canadians and launched All Contracts, an online shop for downloadable, reliable, lawyer-drafted contract templates and kits. All Contracts supports the All community without the stress and financial barriers that may come with hiring a lawyer. Like many of her clients, Darielle is an entrepreneur. She combines her passion for fitness, creativity, writing, and advocacy to create a unique legal experience. AWE helps you establish your business goals and protects fellow athletes, creatives, and entrepreneurs by drafting relevant contracts. The motto is simplicity and transparency while ensuring maximum protection and legal compliance. Darielle is a member of the Ontario Bar. She graduated from Osgoode Hall Law School and worked at Greenspan Partners LLP, a leading criminal defense law firm in the country. She has a background in media, marketing, and strategic planning. She uses her creativity and collaborates with her clients to create customized solutions. Darielle has worked within her community to educate entrepreneurs and creatives about the law and business, teaching and providing workshops at places such as Ryerson University, Lululemon, and Artscape Daniel Launchpad, and appearing on several podcasts. She is passionate about education and providing access to legal knowledge and services. Outside of work, she is a world traveler, runner, indoor cycling instructor, actor, yogi, dancer, amateur surfer, and loves all forms of fitness. She is a creative writer and loves setting goals and then smashing them. I have had the absolute pleasure of working with Darielle on a few different projects, and from the moment we met, knew we'd become fast friends. I am thrilled she made the trek from Toronto to join us today, and I cannot wait to dive into the conversation. Hi, Darielle. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> taking the train down. <laughs> yeah, this is a thrilling in-person <laughs> recording, so very exciting. happy to be here. Um, okay, so there's a ton to talk about when it comes to like legal education, when you're starting a business, but before we do all of that, can you share a little bit about what inspired you to create All Legal and All Contracts? Yeah, for sure. So. I definitely didn't have a, a traditional or linear uh, career path, and I have definitely been more so in like the arts and creative realms, and I worked in media, and then when I started my legal career, I actually was doing criminal defense law. And so I really created all legal out of a necessity because I just didn't feel like I could be myself and you know practice law in a way that I wanted to, and I kind of thought, you know, what kind of lawyer would I want to hire or engage with? Um, and then, of course, you know, wanting to serve my own community as much as criminal defense work was extremely satisfying. Um, I'm an indoor cycling instructor, a runner, um, you know, all these things. And so it felt really good to be able to create a practice that was like super niche, serving those industries. And so all actually stands for athletes, artists, wellness professionals, and entrepreneurs. So I was really able to kind of blend you know, my legal skills and my passions and, and work with folks who, um, you know, I can really speak to what they're, they're doing and going yeah. through. So, yeah. and then all contracts, um, I launched in 2020. Um, 
sort of as a reaction to clients or people who would make inquiries um, and not necessarily be ready or in the financial position to hire a lawyer, but needing some sort of template, quick fix and everything online, you know, wasn't necessarily curated to what they were doing or written um, for Canadian entrepreneurs. And so that's kind of like a completely separate business and offering for folks who just need quick downloadable DIY templates Mm -hmm. um, to kind of set themselves up for success without actually having to hire a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And that touches on a really interesting point in that often when I'm working with folks um, like through coaching or through programming, whatnot, um, they'll like say, hey, I found this like contract template. And a lot of the times they're drafted from the States, um, which is different. Yes, (laughs) Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it definitely is different. Um, specifically, you know, um, jurisdictional issues, and then intellectual property issues, and that type of thing. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, I always caution people: if you're getting templates, like, make sure you know where they are, where they're from. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, and that's something that I didn't really consider until those moments came up when I was like, wait. Because, yeah, Canadian law is different. Yes, yes. <laughs> Even the language sometimes that we use is different. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely like a huge reaction that I get from, from people being like, oh, this is Canadian made. And, and so yes. it's like yeah. that level of comfort. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so you're someone who not only is an entrepreneur, but like regularly works with entrepreneurs. So what are some... I guess like common mistakes or misconceptions that you see when folks are first starting out? I would say the thrill and excitement of launching a business tends to kind of trump all of the other things that might not be as sexy. Right. Um, so everyone wants to spend money on logos and designers and website mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And that's totally fine. Um, but I would say, you know, like jumping the gun to those things without creating some sort of business plan or budget for accounting, for legal, for, you know, other professional services. Um, and then also what I see often with new entrepreneurs is, you know, what we call the handshake deal, working (laughs) with friends, um, not really putting things pen to paper, Mm. um, and then kind of getting burned and then going back and being like, okay, what is my business structure and what should this contract include? Um, so I think it's kind of, you know, as much as you're excited, putting time and effort into those, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe less flashy things, but things that are going to set you up for success. Yeah. Um, because I, a lot of the time folks will like, you know, they'll be working alongside another community member, a friend, even like, a like a life partner in starting these businesses, (laughs) um, or these like social enterprises. And that, it means you're kind of inherently in a contract with them when you're starting those businesses. Um, but it doesn't necessarily always feel like that because it's like a passion project that you've started to turn into something. And then suddenly you're like, oh, right, yeah, this is this is a real thing. For sure. And I mean, we won't get into kind of yeah. the nuts and bolts of the law, but in, in Canada, like partnerships exist just by virtue of you um, going into business some, with someone with a view for making a profit. So you might not right. even have anything on paper, but legally you're in a partnership. Right. So <laughs> there's things to consider and for sure, like I've seen friendships dissolve and working with a life partner can be challenging. And so I really um, urge people to have those hard conversations and, and divvy up the roles and responsibilities and investment and time investment, all that stuff yeah. uh, beforehand. Yeah. Hey, um, when, Folks are just starting out, so outside of just like, you know, understanding that they need a plan for legal bookkeeping, all of those things, from a legal consideration, what are some initial first steps that folks can take? Yeah, so I'd say if they're operating using a name other than their own, um, they're either going to be registering for a master business license in Ontario or thinking about incorporation. So even if you're not like there yet to incorporate your business, understanding what does that mean you know, when should I incorporate? What does that look like? Um, and so setting up that kind of legal um, structure mm-hmm. from the get-go. So a lot of folks start as sole proprietorships. Maybe they have a, a name that they're using and then they incorporate. But I think it's good to kind of understand those things. And then, like we kind of touched on, if you're working with other people, 
having contracts in place, mm -hmm. what does that relationship look like? If you're hiring people, mm -hmm. understanding, are they contract workers? Are they employees? Having proper contracts in place. Um, and then just in the age of you know, social media and everything being online, especially my coaching clients, you know, intellectual property, what does that look like when you're sharing um, videos? And right. I know we had a disclaimer for this even, you know, having, protecting yourself, um, you know, by having proper waivers and disclaimers and things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so much information shared online. Um, and also, it's such an easy way to reach people in, yeah, in this day and age. And yes. also, like, what does that even mean to be reaching all of these people who you don't actually have like a direct relationship with? And if you have a, if you're a regulated professional, especially mm -hmm. in the health, health and wellness space, you want to be really cognizant that you're not um, coming across as though you're giving specific health advice or something right. like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there are so many lawyers out there, and mm -hmm. lawyers who <laughs> practice like such different types of law. You've <laughs> done a few of them yourself. So what are some good questions to really understand if like, a lawyer is a right fit for you, like for an entrepreneur looking for legal support? Yeah, I think that's a great question and there's no right answer. I think it's like any relationship, having the opportunity to have an initial call or consult or whatever that looks like. Um, for me personally, it would be the comfort and ease to ask questions because so often people think, oh, that's a stupid question, I'm not gonna ask. and you know, I certainly encourage my clients to ask all the questions. There's no dumb question or bad question. Um, and then I would say working with someone who actually has like experience doing exactly what you're doing. So if you're a mm -hmm. photographer, you want to work with someone who understands, you know, usage rights and licensing and all that type of stuff. So yeah. I would definitely talk to your community, fellow photographers or graphic designers, whoever you are, and see, you know, who's the lawyer that, that folks are kind of feel like they get what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a personal thing too, right? Yeah. Whether you click with someone, it's also what you're looking for. Maybe you don't want a long-term relationship. You just want someone to incorporate you and then that's it. Right. So, and maybe it's purely a financial thing, you know, right. the cheapest option. So, um, but I would shop around for yeah. sure. Yeah. That, that kind of touches on an interesting point of like, as much as there are good questions to ask, to the lawyer themselves, like there's also a lot of really good questions to ask yourself as the entrepreneur of like, what are my outcomes from wanting to speak to a lawyer? What do I need? What can I afford? Mm -hmm. um, and just like, yeah, understanding what you need out of the conversation as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oh, yeah, like I said, I think just that open line of communication is what you would Ultimately. want from anybody that you're working with, yeah, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I know that there have been like situations in the past where someone who has a nonprofit ends up like hiring a lawyer who has no experience in working mm -hmm. in nonprofit and they're like, oh right, like you're a like you're a corporate lawyer. And that's great. And you're very good at your job. But you don't really understand yeah. the nonprofit side of things. And I would caution someone working with a lawyer who claims to do everything. Unless not a full service firm, but yeah, you know <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Choking, um, but yeah, I would definitely like find out their niche, their specialty, who they work with, mm -hmm. testimonials, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some you know like some pro tips you can share with entrepreneurs um, <laughs> as they you know start to begin to think about those legal considerations for their organization? Yeah, I would just say like having those conversations, especially if you're working with someone. Um, like I said before, the commitment piece, the investment piece, the roles and responsibilities, um, and understanding where your liability kind of lies, and then working backwards for like what is most valuable to you and your business. Is it mm -hmm. your intellectual property? Is there a lot of confidentiality that needs to be protected? Um, are you a regulated professional? And so liability is of a, a concern. So I think it's just understanding within your you know business what you're doing, what you're selling. Um, where that priority should be and then kind of working backwards proactively rather mm -hmm. than waiting till you get burned because yeah. you don't have a contract or you know one partner isn't pulling their weight or something like that mm -hmm. yeah um and you and i didn't talk about this before this conversation but we've talked about it in the past when you've facilitated workshops um just around the idea of like how to actually approach contracts and like 
negotiations and contracts and things like that. And you, you shared some really insightful things. So I'm wondering if you'd be open to like sharing some of those learnings that you've had of like, yeah, like that speaking for yourself and like knowing your own power in entering into those spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I say this all the time, like thanks for reminding for new <laughs> entrepreneurs. They're so excited and they feel like they don't deserve to have a seat at the table or something. Um, and so they just kind of say yes or sign the contract. And so I just want to be really clear that a contract is just a first offer. Mm -hmm. You're definitely allowed to negotiate and certainly ask questions if you're not mm -hmm. sure what something means, if there's some sort of, you know, exclusivity clause or non-compete or something that could limit you in the future. Mm -hmm. You want to understand what that means. Um, and there's, there's room to negotiate especially if it's, it might, not, like we talked about in workshops, the answer may be not right now, but maybe you're going to build in something that in three months you're going to review mm. it. So I think empowering folks to, um, you know, just like have permission to, mm. to ask questions, to negotiate, um, and to understand some of those basic legal terms, which is why I'm so passionate about legal education, so that you know you might not be able to do these things yourself, but then you can understand what someone's talking about when they're mm -hmm. talking about share structures or liability or you know all these terms that yeah. can feel really jar like intimidating. Yeah. So um, yeah, I definitely think that having that confidence to mm -hmm. you know push back or ask questions and look at that contract just as like a launching point to mm -hmm. negotiate. Yeah. Um, and you and I had this conversation where I didn't start using contracts as a photographer until I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really a moment of like, mm, okay, <laughs> I learned some things. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> now when I build those contracts, yes, it's like, you know, outlining that relationship and what it looks like, but it also makes it easier for me to be clear on like what I value out of my role as a photographer and like the type of work that I'll engage with or you know what um yeah what feels really important to me to like protect in a sense and not like in a um like in a negative way but just like that's something that's so valuable to me and it's a part of like the impact that I hope to have through the work that I do that like yeah I can include it as part of that contract yeah. so it's a really clear yeah, understanding. And I'm like obviously such a fan <laughs> of contract, contract nerd, but it's a way to, like you said, it's not just the legal stuff. It's a way for you to express your values, but it's also a way to express like a mutual expectation. The client is also able to hold you accountable for the deliverables. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be a huge money-making thing, especially I see with like graphic designers you know, including like rush fees and things like that, especially when you're working on deliverables and timelines. Mm -hmm. So you're actually, you know, setting yourself up to potentially make more money, um, not work with clients who are disrespectful of your time or yeah. potentially your, your colleagues. Um, but yeah, I think often times people are scared to use contracts starting out because they're like, oh, I don't want to scare my clients off. But really, mm -hmm. you know, from the reaction that I've seen from other people, of course, I'm a bit biased, but is that it does set a tone of professionalism and both yeah. parties are being protected. And then, like you said, you can kind of brand it in a way that it's your voice. It's, it's what you, you know, hope to, I don't know, achieve during the photography session or, yeah. or what have you. Mm -hmm. So a lot more can be kind of baked into the contract that it's not just like these scary legal terms, yeah. which can feel like a lot. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the contract is you know, sharing your boundaries. And we love boundaries. Boundaries are great. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So you've mentioned a couple times how much you love like the idea of legal education and making folks, you know, like making that accessible for people. I'm curious if you have any, um, any tips on like where people can find that sort of legal information uh, or education, particularly from like the Canadian lens. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a tough one in that like it is really inaccessible right. I mean I try to do my part by just I would say actually a lot of law firms have really good blogs mm -hmm. so checking out if yeah. you're aware of the Canadian law firms checking out their blog sections are, yeah. are a pretty good way to start um, I try to publish them and um, and <coughs> and sorry the frog in my throat um, where else can they find 
you know, there's legal podcasts, mm -hmm. things like that. But um, and like we've kind of worked together on like signing up for webinars and joining mm -hmm. entrepreneurial groups that are Canadian and that can service entrepreneurs and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was actually when you said like blog posts, I remember reading some from the uh, legal website that I was like, oh, right. Yeah, I'll save this and send it to entrepreneurs. So that's actually a really, a really great reminder of them. Yeah. And I mean, and all contracts is like supposed to be the resource for folks who just yes. like because it's one thing to learn all about the reasons why you need a contract and all the terms that you should include and your mm -hmm. website terms and conditions and why a privacy policy is important. But then people are kind of left, well, what now? And so with all contracts, it's really, you know, it's supposed to be a really user-friendly experience where um, all the contracts are kind of bundled into these kits so you can get, you know, a photography kit and it has right. all the contracts you need or you can just get your website terms and things like that. So, um, that's kind of been my attempt to make things a little bit more accessible. It's not free. Um, but again, that's like an investment that you're making into mm -hmm. your business. It's a template you can use over and over again. Um, and, you know, they're quite comprehensive. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so it's always really interesting. And like I'll always I always note this, particularly when, you know, I'll have folks do sessions on bookkeeping or like cash flow projections and they're like they're so jazzed and excited about it and I was like and that's why you're delivering this session because I just don't have the same enthusiasm <laughs> so you have like a lot of enthusiasm about your work I'm curious what like your favorite part of either like specifically uh like all legal all contracts or just practicing law mm -hmm. I'd say it's the, like well I know 100% <laughs> it's the, it's the clients because like like I said, these are folks who are working in spaces that I'm also working in or really interested in. Yeah. Um, and so hearing some of the innovations, especially during like COVID with fitness professionals yeah. taking things online, that was really exciting. And then being um, kind of like having to be a problem solver and strategic when they come to me with questions like, my client is never paying on time. Or it's like, okay, well, how can we solve that problem right. in the contract? And then, you know, with all contracts, it's almost like, well, I got this question so many times during, in, my, in my firm, you know, maybe I should create an online program template because everyone was all of a sudden coming to me saying, I'm launching an online program. Can you draft this for me? Can you draft yeah. this for me? So that got me thinking, well, I'm sure many people kind of need this kind of generic online program template. Right. So I really do learn from clients, mm -hmm. like what those new kind of needs are, even like on the, t I'm so not techie, like <laughs> at all, but like on the tech end of things, like what are people using to launch their online courses or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, for their um, like Marco Polo app to chat within these groups. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what these things are. So um, I feel like it keeps me on like in the know. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I. Ever since like you and I have had these conversations of like what to consider from from legal perspectives with like all of these particularly wellness and fitness uh, as someone who's like also really interested in that space and mm -hmm. likes to participate in it. Um, yeah, like when the pandemic happened, like I started doing online um, basically like training with someone from BC and I was like, oh, yeah, like she's probably like she has to sort so much of that out mm -hmm. and figuring out the legal side of things and you know not only just from like a Canadian lens and then she's like it's online so it's not just Canadian so how yes. does that all play in um and yeah and like I never would have thought about those things if it hadn't been for you bringing them up from your lens as a lawyer which I guess is like that's the value of hiring a lawyer <laughs> yeah and like that's what makes my job exciting right yeah. because we live in a landscape that's constantly changing and there's social media and there's, you know, all these types of things. But yeah, I think it's really cool to see like what people are creating, you yeah. know? Yeah. Okay, cool. And if you had to choose like, hmm, I, w I guess not necessarily like the hardest part, but when you are working with folks, like the thing that seems to be the biggest barrier that they face what do you kind of notice that to be? I think it's like this fear paralysis that we kind of talked about where it just seems so overwhelming, like it will be so expensive, like they just don't have the mm -hmm. capacity to like understand and so they do nothing. Right. They do nothing until 
they're at a point where it's like very crucial and there's like a time, it's time sensitive or something's happened. Right. So yeah, I think that's mainly what I see. Like not having, like you talked about not having any contracts, not right. putting anything kind of in place. And then you get the opposite, the like super keeners <laughs> who are like, I'm launching a business. Tell me absolutely everything yeah. you need to do. I'm doing everything from the get go. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'd be surprised like big successful companies, they don't have their stuff together either, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's like this imposter syndrome as well of starting a business. Right. And I think it's understanding what needs to be done right now, what can mm-hmm. wait. Um, but yeah, I think oftentimes people just kind of like decide they, that they don't, they just don't want to deal with it. it. Yeah. It's yeah. like an avoidance strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, I'll just be well, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's totally fair. And that, that's a good, like, I know that there's been moments of, um, where, like, yeah, it's, people have asked for like, okay, can you direct me to some lawyers? Um, like, can you offer some insight on like what that pricing might be? And I've personally not, like a lot of the work that I've done with lawyers has been through other larger organizations that I'm part of. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily have those costs. Um, and yeah, like that information isn't like super readily available. Yeah. So like having that sense of like, this seems like someone that I can talk to, that I can feel comfortable, like asking questions around things like what pricing looks like and how much will this cost me versus like, mm-hmm. you know, the full suite of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like to, to that point, it's true. Like the pricing for lawyers, like it's not transparent at all. Obviously, if you go for a big full service firm, you're going to be paying that premium pricing. Mm-hmm. But again, like when I have consults with lawyers, I'm often like, not with lawyers, with folks with who that, want to hire yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. And they're like, okay, I have a couple of consults. I don't take that personally. I'm like, yeah, great. You know, like mm-hmm. get that information because, um, yeah, it's very rare that people advertise their hourly rate on their website. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so as we kind of are wrapping up, uh, where can folks find out more information about you and like our legal and our contracts and all the beautiful things that you do? <laughs> yeah, if you're in Ontario and need legal, um, alllegal.com is, is the law firm. If you're anywhere across Canada looking for those contract templates, then it would be allcontracts.com. And I'm on both on social media and responsive to email, so happy to kind of answer questions and post any workshops that we have coming up. And, Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm so thrilled, not only for the chance to talk to you, because I I always love that, but also to have you here in person. It's really exciting. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again to Darielle from Our Legal and Our Contracts for joining us today. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Pillar Nonprofit Network and the work being done by our organization, you can head on over to pillarnonprofit.ca. Uh, there you can also find some resources to help support those first few steps of building your social enterprise, or you can fill out a social enterprise intake form to connect directly with our team. Uh, I am your host, your guide, your business bud, Mary Muliji, and this has been Pollinating Purpose a caring approach to business. Thank you for coming along for the ride. I am so happy you're here. Everybody!